different organisations think about technology platforms in different ways. There's two specific ways of thinking about a technology platform. One is it's the embodiment of a competency within your company that you're managing, something that you are really good at and you want to exploit. The second way to think about a technology platform is something that is skewers across different business units or, or categories. So one business unit might be thinking about technology in this way. There's another business unit aimed at a completely different market with a different sort of product. However, there's a technology that cuts across both of them and individually both business units don't have the critical mass to cover the whole lot so you can manage the technology platform across the business unit. An example of a technology platform is say biofilms or the management of biofilms and underneath that you'll have a set of technologies that support that supports that technology platform or you might have an enzyme that actually breaks the biofilm so you might also have a uh, in the same company something that's putting coatings down on surfaces so those could be like copper or specific types of polymers that are there to destroy the bacteria before it even starts and biofilms can be in medical devices in the mouth or on surfaces so how how would you manage that so basically you have these different technologies in different business units across a very diverse company so you might have one business unit selling coatings another one selling mouthwash and another one making coatings for medical devices so all of those are different business units aimed at different markets and different sectors and different geographies so what you'd need to do is to assemble what technologies there are and then you try to manage them across and put somebody in charge of managing biofilms. Some companies call it the technology skewer, because it skewers business units. So there's two ways of looking at it, depending on size, geographic scope, and diversity of business units. So you can obviously use your own technology to grow the company. However, you need to focus. You need to focus on the right things. And first of all, you need to make sure that you've got, you actually have got a technology that actually works for you and you are good at it. So you've got to work out what you are really good at and whether you do have a competency there and whether you're going to have a competency in the future. Because you don't want to spread your resources so thinly that it undermines your own core business to try to exploit something somewhere else. So that's the first thing. The next thing is you've got to work out whether actually customers want that technology in a different product. That requires you to think about a different market sector that you might not be obviously a fade with and also trying to think about how can you change the rules of the game in another market using your technology to disrupt somebody else. The best way to do that is to ask somebody outside how good is this and is it really exploitable. So then what I, we, we would suggest you do is then build a business plan. Build what, what size of market are you looking at? How do you exploit it? How do you get into it? What people do you need to get into that market? And, it's only, and then put it to scrutiny, put it out. Don't just write the thing yourself and leave it. Make sure that other people have read it. You, you'd need to get some advice from the people in that sector themselves. So get some market research, get some financial advice Finance is important because you've only got a limited amount of money. You can't do everything. So you have to be able to say how much money you're going to have and where do you draw the line and make sure you've got a good IP map and landscape of where you're going to enter because you don't want to be spend a lot of money on what looks like an attractive technology only to find it's ring fenced. You can't get in there. And also you get specialists in that technology that are broader than just your own industry sector. How do you find those people? Well, it's not just about citations and IP searches, and it's also about getting yourself immersed in that other sector. So you really, really do understand what's, what's going on. There's a business strategy and a technology strategy. They both should work together. The technology strategy should 
feed the business strategy and the business strategy should then inform the direction of the technology strategy. But one, the other thing that's important is the technology strategy should not only say which bits to accelerate, but also things to stop. Companies find that really difficult, especially if you put a lot of money into something. But what you do with the technology strategy, and this is forgotten by quite a lot of companies, it actually influences the future. So you're actually changing the future by implementing a technology strategy. Your competitors will react to that. We suggest that it's a continual process. It's not a, a yearly thing. You have to continue to add into it, change it, develop it. You might be developing a technology that's either too late or too early, or doesn't fit what the consumer actually wants from products. However, don't forget the technologies and scientists might have a view of the world, which is actually right, because they might push in a new technology in an area that actually consumers don't even know them once yet until they've seen it. A really good example is the Sony Walkman. In the 1970s, they did a market study before the Sony Walkman came out and nobody wanted to walk around London with things sticking in their ears. And that was the case. So if they had just taken cues from the marketing, it would have failed. It just so happened they pushed it and then they said, oh yeah, that's quite a good idea. From the Sony Walkman came the iPod, from the iPod came MP3, but the, the, the technology has moved on so quickly with the internet and who knows where the world will go. Successful companies tend to be very agile. They tend to look outside as well. So they, they don't rely on just themselves to develop the technology. I think that's really important. US companies are very good at look, looking outside of their own sphere of influence and knowledge. Uh, they tend also to employ people that's not in their own industry sector. So they shape the tree by employing people from another sector into their own. I, I think that's really important to look outside. Um, and, you know, if you're moving into another sector, for example, you do really need to know from someone else outside the company about what's going on. Henry Chisborough says that not all smart people work for you. That's true, and the world's a basket of things going on that you can then play on if you're clever at it and smart at it. But that requires you to let go of your preconceptions of what you know and what the world knows.